Good afternoon. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Renee Bernasconi, and I'm the president and CEO of Seabury. Welcome to our celebration of life. Twice a year, Seabury gathers together to remember and honor the residents and members who have passed. These are individuals that Seabury had the privilege to know and to care for. Today, I welcome you to that ceremony. This is an opportunity for friends and family to come together even if that means virtually and reflect on the joy we have shared with these individuals and to celebrate their lives. We invite you to take a moment to pause so that we can take a few minutes to celebrate those that we have lost over the last six months. Thank you and be well. I am resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though he die. And whoever has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. After my awaking, he will raise me up and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see, and my eyes behold him who is a friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in himself, and none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord, and if we die, we die in the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our brothers and sisters in Seabury. We thank you for giving them to us, their Seabury family and friends, to know and to love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until, by your call, we are reunited with those who have gone before. Amen. Most merciful God, whose wisdom is beyond our understanding, deal graciously with this Seabury family in their grief. Surround them with your love, that they may not be overwhelmed by their loss, but have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet the days to come. Amen.
This is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in, in his right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I, feel, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Our hearts, we gather today together, though we may be apart, we remember and honor the people we've lost, snuggled forever in our heart. We are all better for knowing you, whether short time or for long. You were part of our community. You helped to make us strong. Missed by your Seabury family today and for many a year, you've added smiles and laughter, but today we shed a tear. You will never be forgotten. Love for you is all around. Let us rejoice in your memory. Our love for you will abound. A reading from the book of Job, the 19th chapter. Have pity on me. Have pity on me, O you, my friends. For the hand of God has touched me. Why do you, like God, pursue me? never satisfied with my flesh. Oh, that my words were written down. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and with lead they were engraved on a rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, then in my flesh I shall see God whom I shall see on my side. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hope is a thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. And sweetest in the gale is heard and sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many warm. I've heard it in the chillest land and on the strangest sea, yet never in extremity it asked a crumb of me. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved and though the mountains be toppled into the depths of the sea, though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble at its tumult. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her and shall not be overthrown. God shall help her at the break of day. The nations make much ado and the kingdoms are shaken. God has spoken and the earth shall melt away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now and look upon the works of the Lord. What awesome things he has done on earth. It is he who makes war to cease in all the world. He breaks the bow 
and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. And now, reading from a Jewish prayer book, Vetaher Lebenu, given to me by a friend many years ago, on life and death. To everything there is a season, a time for everything under the sun, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to laugh and a time to cry, a time to dance and a time to mourn, a time to seek, and a time to lose. This is the time we remember those who gave meaning to our lives. This is the time we remember the bonds that tied us together, the love that we shared, and the memories that remain with us still. Oh God, as we recall the loss of those so loved, be with us. Help us to remember all things change, the earth and stars, time and seasons, and we who must to dust return. You alone are everlasting, our eternal rock whose presence redeems us from death and despair. God of comfort, shield us with your love and kindness. Help us to know that time does heal and grief will yield its final grip. May the memory of those we loved and lost strengthen our lives and guide us always in ways of goodness. God of compassion, be with us now and grant us peace. A Psalm at Nightfall, written by Elsa P. Wahlberg, who happens to be a 95-year-old resident in skilled nursing. O guardian of every eventide, when daylight fades and the shadows of night cloak the earth in purple darkness, then I gather the garment of your presence about me 
and wear it as a mantle around my soul. I thrill to your closeness. Envelop me in the blanket of your gentleness that I may rest quietly and watch with you as one by one you set the stars on fire and sing to me a cosmic lullaby. Just as you comprehend the vast reaches of space, so you are the guardian of my deepest self. I thank you, mothering one, for all the blessings and the graces, the energy, the nourishment, the disciplines that have been your gifts to me this day. Now, cloaked securely in your presence, I give myself to you. Cradle me this night in the safety of your love. Then I shall sleep well. Good night. From the Book of Wisdom, chapter 3, 1 through 5, and 9. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster, and their going from us to be their destruction, but they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good, because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Those who trust in him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones, and he watches over his elect. The Word of the Lord. for a barn man, for Lowell Fuster. How exposed to the world we feel without you, Lowell, the perfect photographer of barns, whose aperture was always right for the hay-filled bays you led us to. Such barns. You will live forever in a fine one now, one of those many mansions in the sky. Please reserve more bays near yours for us. John 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom, whom God will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. Thanks be to God for this reading. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. We are gathered here today 
as one community across time and space, thanks to the miracle of modern technology, to remember, honor, and uplift the beloved members of our Seabury community who have died in the past few months. Additionally, this space has been intentionally designated as one that allows for each of us to grieve, to be sad, angry, or hurt, because we feel these losses deeply. The Seabury community, at its inception and continually throughout the years, has relationship one to another at its core. In these times of COVID, the isolation, social distance, and inability to be physically present with one another is suffocating. Not only have we been unable to gather to comfort one another in grief, but the important moments of our yearly schedule have been canceled, reimagined, or Zoomed. Birthdays, anniversaries, weddings, church. One of the annual church services that speaks to my heart is All Saints Day, which is November 1st each year. As one of only seven principal feasts in the Episcopal calendar, the celebration of All Saints Day is often moved to the following Sunday. On this day, my home church brings in a bagpiper and a drummer to separate this day from all others. The necrology, or the reading of the names of the dead, is read, and prayers are offered for the whole of the saints who have gone on to paradise. Since a very early age, I have loved this tradition, but especially the hymns for the day. One such hymn, I sing a song of the saints of God, has always caught my ear as interesting. It goes like this. I sing a song of the saints of God, patient and brave and true, who toiled and fought and lived and died for the Lord they loved and knew. The remainder of both the first and second verse outlines some of these saints of God with short descriptions. And one was a doctor, and one was a queen, and one was a shepherdess on the green. And, and one was a soldier, and one was a priest, and one was slain by a fierce wild beast. In the words of their family members, our saints of Seabury were described in many ways. Gardener, advocate, sports enthusiast, musician, world traveler, engineer and inventor, avid tennis player, voracious reader, father, child of God. The loss of our own community members has only been compounded by loss on a national and international scale. On September 18th of 2020, the world lost a great servant of the people in Supreme Court Justice and devout Jew, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Often when someone dies, our Christian response is, rest in peace. The traditional Jewish response, however, is Yehi Sicha Baruch, which translates to, may his or her memory be a blessing. Rachel Stommel, Jewish activist and author, reflects on Ginsburg's death in this way. In the context of Jewish law, remembrance is not a reflexive or passive process directed inward. The Torah commandments cannot be fulfilled by quiet contemplation. Memorialization must manifest through specific action. The author continues, now is not the time for reflection and unobtrusive mourning that stops short of implementing any fundamental change. For memory to mean anything, she writes, it must be active. It must be revolutionary. 
In light of this reflection, it seems perfectly appropriate to suggest that may her memory be a revolution might be a more historically accurate and perhaps relevant thought to our community in Mooringning today. As we gather at this time, both to celebrate the lives of our loved ones lost and to acknowledge our own grief due to their absence, it may seem odd to suggest that memories can and maybe should be revolutionary. But as we look into the lives of our own Seabury family members, it is clear that their desire to change the world with each act of service should live on in each of us. In exploring the carefully crafted obituaries written by their family members, I have been moved deeply by their revolutionary lives. Let us look briefly into some of these blessed memories. He had an amazing sense of humor and loved to share jokes. He was a wonderful father, husband, grandfather, and friend. She was known for the warmth of her personality, for caring for the disadvantaged, her strong sense of justice, and her devotion to peace building and humanistic endeavors. As an outspoken supporter of women's empowerment and civic engagement, she was a leader to countless Girl Scouts and a longtime volunteer with the League of Women Voters. May their memories be a revolution. She will be remembered as generous, thoughtful, helpful, and a good-hearted person. She was always willing to give her time to help someone. He was a man who was always fixing something and enjoyed nothing better than a good engineering product. He was also known to enjoy a martini before dinner. She loved music. She met her husband in a corral. She played cello and was a member of the Seabury Choir. May their memories be a revolution. During her retirement, she volunteered for Meals on Wheels and took great joy in teaching English as a second language to adults in the Hartford area. She, like her husband, had a strong work ethic, living out the Rotary's motto, service above self. She was generous of heart, providing loving care to many friends stricken with illness over the years and supporting their loved ones during difficult times. May their memories be a revolution. As we reflect on the lives of our Seabury saints, I'm drawn back to the final verse of the hymn that I shared a few moments ago. They lived not only in ages past, there are hundreds of thousands still, and the world is bright with the joyous saints who love to do Jesus' will. You can meet them in school or in lanes or at sea, in church or in trains or in shops or at tea. The world is bright with the joyous saints. For the saints of folk just like me, and I mean to be one too. Our friends, our neighbors, our loved ones, these Seabury saints, they have given us so much. Their legacy motivates us to work toward building bridges in our community and beyond. For with each one of these loved ones lost, left behind is a lifetime of memories, love, and inspiration that will forever propel us to be the change that we hope to see in this world. May they rest in peace. May their memories be a blessing. May their memories and all our lives be a revolution. Amen.
Shirley Meyer. Constance Ballard. Anita Gray. Betty Domer. Mary Jo Desi. Serena DeGrandi. Patrick Keneally. Cheryl Heilig. Sissy Glassman. Linda Fisk. Francis Carpenter. Elizabeth Bowman. Sue Carpenter. Doris Cheney. Anne Hicks. Miriam Lockhart. Virginia Baldwin. Albert Van Stock. Priscilla Hook. Thomas Reed. Bernita Sundquist. Miriam Letterman. Hazel Hiltabidal. Rose Gambarata. Martha Kaplan. Eugenie Heterilla. Mary Sue McCain. Charlotte Babcock. Wade Hiltabidal. Betty Stevens. Marion McCain. Stuart Babcock. Elaine Lucky. Shirley Chacon. Maynard Bartram. Harold Wright. Carol Huxley. Robert Buckingham. Herbert Zeering Jr. Carol Baldwin. David Weisbrod. In paradisum, tu cante angeli, in tuo ventu, suscipi ante 
Madiras. Et bedu canta in civitatem sanctam Jerusalem. Chorus Angelorum, Tesu Shibiat, et cum Lazaro quantam paupede, eterna. Il cadavi il cadasha me raba, bel ma di varachir te viam lich malhute, the hayahon of yomahon of hayedahol bait Yisrael, the agala of his man karivim ru amen, the hesh me raba me varach le alam o la me almaya, yit barach vi shabach vi paar vi ramam vi nase, vi hadar vi hale vi halal shemeda kud sha brihu, le ela min kober hatavashirata. Tushbacha tava neemata, da meran belma, vimru, amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shemaya, behaim, alenu veo kol Yisrael, vimru, amen. O se shalom bin ramav, hu ya a se shalom, alenu veo kol Yisrael, vimru, amen. Zikronam levraha, may all their memories be for a blessing. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. The Lord God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the holy and undivided Trinity, guard you, save you, and bring you to that heavenly city where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.